Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video we are going to be creating some butterflies using watercolored backgrounds from Tombow markers. I'm going to be using the Love and Kindness stamp set a lot throughout this video. This is from Cheat and Kay Designs and I absolutely love this butterfly image. So I'm starting off with a piece of watercolor paper here. This is Fabriano Artistico Bright White and I'm stamping this butterfly numerous times in the Obsidian Ink from Gina K Designs. I had to stamp it a lot because it's textured, cardstock, and also my ink pad needs re-inking. So I uh, just wanted to point that out. Now I'm going to be starting off at first. I wanted to show you how I watercolored this butterfly using some Tombow markers. I will create the backgrounds later on in the video, but this was kind of an experiment for me. I was trying to uh, create a monarch butterfly with this. So I'm starting off with a little bit of tip to tip blending. This is still kind of a work in progress for me. I'm still learning with these markers, but I really did enjoy using them. So I have three different colors here. I have a red, an orange, and a yellow, and I used uh, 856, 933, and 055 are the colors of the markers. Now I apologize if I sound a little hoarse. I'm voiceovering this in the morning, and my voice is not really warmed up yet, so I apologize if I sound a little hoarse. Uh, so onto my butterfly here on the right wings I had done the tip to tip and then blended out with some water and a small paintbrush. Now for the other side I was like I said experimenting with how to color with these. So on this other side I was a little more laid back. I just added the color really quick. I didn't worry about each individual section and then just blended it out and I liked the left side better than the right. So once that was done, I'll set that off on the side to dry and I'll die cut that with the coordinating die later on. Now for the background, I wanted to show you this is the pad of watercolor paper that I use. It comes in a block and they are, all the sides are glued together. There's one corner that's loose. So I'm just taking a bone folder, kind of getting that under it and then I'm just going to run that bone folder along the edge to let that glue loose. So I just wanted to show you that that's how these blocks of watercolor paper come and this is one of my favorites. Now I'm going to create an entire background with the Tombow markers. So I just took a rainbow assortment that I had. I'm going to start with the red and I'm just going to scribble down a bunch of this color. These are brush markers so they have a really nice uh, brush tip to them. I do see them used a lot in lettering, so they're really great for lettering, not just coloring or creating backgrounds. Just going through the rainbow of colors, adding all of that on there, and then I'm going to take a thick paintbrush. I'm going to wet the paintbrush down really well, and I'm going to start kind of watercoloring this, so blending these colors together. I do rinse off my brush in between some of the colors. If I didn't, I would have really lost all the bright individual colors, and it also helps so I'm not turning my background into mud. Now, the blue and the purple was a little harder to blend through. I think it was just because of the shades that I chose, but once I went back over it a couple times, I think it created a beautiful blend, and it is such a gorgeous background. I really did have a hard time cutting this down to anything. So I'm going to speed up the drying process by just going over that with my heat tool. And then I typically like to run this through my die cut machine. So I'll place a piece of copy paper over the top and run that through. And that just helps flatten that out so I can stamp on it a little bit easier. I put my uh, watercolored panel into my Misty. This is the black Misty from Hero Arts. I really love the black on this. Black is kind of my color. And I loaded in that butterfly again. This is from the Love and Kindness stamp set. And I'm going to ink that up with the Obsidian Amalgam ink and stamp that onto my background. And I loved that I could kind of place and pick and choose what colors I wanted to show through on the petals. And like I said, I stamped this multiple times really because... Uh, it is a watercolored paper, so it's textured, and also, like I said, my ink pad just desperately needs re-inking, and I keep forgetting to do that. So once I have all of these butterflies 
uh, stamped down. You can see I do have some empty space, so I can always save this panel off on the side for a future project. I'm going to just kind of speed up that heat process or that drying process again because since I stamped it so many times, it's a little wet. Once it's dry, I'll hold my coordinating die in place with the purple tape and run these through my die cut machine. So I did that for all three of them and just carefully popped that out. And now I have these beautiful multicolored butterflies. I just head over heels in love with this. Now for my actual card, I'm also using a sentiment from the Love and Kindness stamp set. I just adore these skinny sentiment strips. And then we have the scripty one there. And I fell in love with this sentiment so much that I decided to make a lot of them. I actually have quite a pile because I made this card ahead of time before I decided to film it. So I have a lot of these that I plan on sending to people and it's such a beautiful sentiment and I, it was very easy to mass produce. So I am stamping this onto a piece of white cardstock that measures three and three quarters by five inches using the amalgam ink again to stamp all of those. And I just made sure I had everything lined up straight by using the door of my Misty. Now I'm going to stamp some of these leaves. This is from the Petals and Wings stamp set. I'm going to stamp them in Key Lime ink from Gina K Designs. There is a coordinating stencil that has some leaves on there, but I wanted to have control of the position of my leaves. So I am just using a comfort block to do that. So just inking up my image and I'm going to stamp that all along the bottom of this card panel. So just kind of turning it every now and then in different directions, going along the side and a little bit up on them. And this was just really so quick to do that I was able to get a lot of these done in a very small amount of time. And I just made sure I left enough room for my little butterfly to be hanging off of the side. Now, once those are all done, I have my panels here and I'm just going to be attaching them to white card front. So these are all going to go on an A2 size card base panel for an a quarter by five and a half. So I have mine cut here and I'm just going to add them straight onto that card front with a tape runner. You could do some dimension and add some foam squares behind those, but with mailing, I didn't want to have any trouble mailing them. So I just kept them nice and flat. Now I did add a little bit of dimension to some of the butterflies. I'm adding the white foam squares from Gina K Designs to the back of the butterflies. So about half of my cards have the foam squares, half of them I just attached right with a dot runner. You could also add some sequins or if you have the new crystalline drops. Uh, I was just kind of going for real clean and simple, something very quick to create. And these are, they're very, very quick to create, mass produce, gorgeous sentiments on the stamp sets and I am just adoring this butterfly and all the different colors that I was able to create with one background. So once I have all of my butterflies attached, I will give you just kind of a quick run through of the different ones that I have here. And I also had a few extra butterflies that I will use on a future project as well because they were just too beautiful to toss. So I also have an extra bonus card listed over on my blog. Be sure to check that out. I will have all the supplies and my blog listed down below in the video description. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and inspiration. Stay safe, everyone, and I will see you next time.